Hey everyone, here's a simple throwing game called Bullseye. You're going to need a bunch of tennis balls, some volleyballs, and some pylons. So you're going to split the gym into two halves, and you can do this lengthwise or widthwise, depending on the space you have. Now on each half, you're going to put a team. So we have a blue team and a red team split evenly, as you see there. And between each team, you're going to set up some cones or some pylons, and put a volleyball on each one of those cones. So those are the targets, those are the bullseyes for the students to throw at. And before the game starts, you'll give them all a tennis ball. And the goal of the game is to be the first team to knock over all three or however many volleyballs you have uh, off the cones. So it's a target practice game. This game is called Rollerball for grades 1 to 6, and you'll need one or two red playground balls. And thanks to Doug Gorham for this game idea. So to start, you'll use the basketball court line as the area, playing area, and you'll divide it into halves and have one team on one half and one team on the other half, and the players have to stay in their own half. And you're going to start with just one of the playground balls, and basically it's a rolling game, so players can uh, move around with the ball if they want, or they can pass the ball. But basically they only have 10 seconds to do something, to either pass it or roll it um, to uh, one teammate or to try and score a point. And to score a point you have to roll it past the end line on the other team's half. So we see the blue team has rolled it and it's made its way past and they've scored a point. So then you would just reset the game. Of course the defending team can move around on their half wherever they want as well. And uh, eventually you can throw in a second ball or you might even uh, want to put in a third. Uh, it's all up to you how you want to work this game. So then you can have uh, two going at the same time. As well you could place down cones behind the end lines and if a ball rolls and knocks over a cone or hits the cone, uh, then the team can score an extra point. So if uh, they get one point for crossing the end line or more points for hitting cones, and if the ball goes out of bounds, then just the first player who uh, who gets to the ball on their side, uh, whatever, whatever side that is rolled out, um, they can uh, just put up their hand just to show that they were the first one across, and they'll just roll the ball into a teammate and play from there. This game's called King's Cone for grades 4 to 8. You'll need cones and foam balls. Different colors would be great, and thank you to Don Smith for this game idea. So to start, you'll split the playing area into two halves, two teams on each half, they have to stay on their half, and it is a dodgeball game, I love dodgeball games, so here's another one, thank you Don, and uh, you also have three cones, those are King's cones on each side, and there will be targets, and if you have basketball nets, you can use those nets as well for uh, another way to win the round, and I'll explain all the different ways. So you put the dodgeballs in, and you can designate certain colors for different things, um, I'll talk about that in a sec, but one way that you can win this round is if a team knocks over the other team's cones. So for example, a uh, blue team would lose that round, and you start a new round. Uh, another way that you can win a round is if you would score in the opposing team's basketball net with a certain color ball. So the purple ball that was thrown, that was the special ball, and right in the hoop, so the green team would win that round as well. And the third way to win is if you would eliminate all the other team, uh, the, the members of the other team by getting them out with a dodgeball, so hitting them with a dodgeball. And uh, some of the rules that we use is, so if you, well, if you get hit, you'll go off to the side. So a player would go off to the side if they were hit into the jail by the, by the teacher. And um, so we see another player also got hit. So there's players who are out and they stay in the line. And they have to remember the order they were out because if a player catches a ball, so another ball was thrown and a player caught that ball, then the first player who was out gets to go in. So every time a ball is caught, a player gets to go back in. Um, if a player can uh, shoot a ball into a hoop, then they can save everybody who is in the jail. So that ball was in the hoop, so everyone who was in the jail would be free. Um, and obviously if a whole team is eliminated, then that round would be over. So in this case, the blue team would win. All right, so today we're going to look at a game called Bench Ball. Uh, this is a game that can be played from grades 3 to 8, and all you need are two benches, typical sports benches, uh, and a set of dodgeballs. All right, so here we have a little diagram. You see our benches coming in, uh, and I've put a red team on that side and a yellow team on that side of the gym. Now the goal of bench ball is to be the first team to get five of your players onto the opposite bench. If you can do that, your team wins the round, and then you will just uh, play a new round after that. All right, so what we have, I'm going to throw one of the red players on the bench over there and one of the yellow players on the opposite bench there. So the teams will be throwing balls not at each other, not a dodgeball game, but onto the opposite bench. Okay, and there are dodgeballs. So, uh, just so you can imagine this here, uh, we're going to take a look at that guy there. He is going to throw the ball, and his partner catches the ball. So, of course, he gets to join him on the bench. All right, pretty simple. All right, take a look at this guy here. He tosses the ball, his partner catches it. Notice how they didn't fall off the bench or anything. So that guy gets to join him on the bench. Okay, take a look here. Oh, yellow guy completely misses. So, of course, he doesn't get to go on the bench. Yellow throws, catches. Another yellow throws, catches. All right, looks like they're picking it up here. And oh, would you look at that? Yellow team wins because they get five people on the bench first. This is pin knockover for grades two to eight. You're going to need plastic bowling pins and some dodgeballs. Now this isn't a dodgeball game. It's more of a throwing accuracy game. So you're going to remind your students that when the, when the game starts. So you're going to have your two teams on the sides of the gym and those plastic pins set up along the ends of the, of the gym. Five or six will be good for this game. And what I like to do is I, I use the lines in the gym as kind of a no guard area where players can't guard their own pins. But uh, you don't have to use those if you don't want to. 
And of course we have our dodgeballs here. So if, uh, the goal of the game is to knock over all the pins on the other team's half, and by doing that you will win the game. So if a player throws the ball over, or you know, if you're doing rolling, you can have them roll it, or underhand, overhand throw, whatever skill you're working on. But regardless, you're gonna, the teams are going to try and knock over the other team's pins. Um, say a red person throws a ball, and even if it hits the wall and knocks over a pin, that's all good. So that pin is down. Now first team to have all five pins down wins, and you can start a new round. Very simple idea. Uh, you can, I guess, you can put some dodgeball rules in as well, where if players get hit, they, they're out. Um, I don't do it that way. I just like them to focus on throwing them at the pins. And of course, the lines, they're there in case, uh, like, so you don't have players puppy guarding the pins or standing right in front of them so the other team can't knock them over. Okay, I named this game Joel's Pin Shuffle. Now, I work with Joel, and he's always coming up with a bunch of different game ideas, so I decided to share another one of his ideas with you guys. This is for grades one to four. You'll need pins and foam balls. Okay, so students will partner up, and partners will face each other along the edges of the gym with one pin between them. Use one of those plastic pins, and one of the partners will start with the ball. You're also going to use some lines in the gym if you have these from the court lines or whatever. You can make some markers, or you can even go lengthwise in the, instead of widthwise if that works. And uh, basically, partners will be rolling the ball back and forward, uh, trying to knock over the pin. So if a partner has rolled it and missed, then the other player gets it and rolls it back. And if the pin is knocked over, then that pin gets to advance one spot closer to the person who knocked it over. So it's right there. Now the other player rolls it back and has hit it, so then it gets to go back to where it was. And so it just goes back and forth until one of the players has advanced the pin all the way to their starting line, and then they can put it back in the middle and go again. This game's called Sinker Ball for grades 2 to 6. You need scooters, plastic bowling pins, skipping ropes, and cones. And it's a teamwork game and also involves a whole bunch of different skills from throwing to rolling to you can have kicking if you'd like, goaltending, blocking, some balance as well. Uh, so you'll start with those scooter boards. There are scooters placed down on the floor. You're going to have to attach skipping ropes to each one of them. You can use some masking tape or if there's a place to tie it onto that works better. And then you'll place down plastic bowling pins, one on each scooter. You'll also have some zones on the side and uh, you'll throw some foam balls in there that'll be used as the, the throwing or rolling or kicking or whatever. Um, you can do this lengthwise or you can do it widthwise depending on the number of students or what age you're playing this game with. Good work either way. And so the setup might look something like this, where you have the skipping ropes attached with the pins. You'll see on the side, there's no, not a dedicated throwing zone in this case. It was just the whole end uh, edge. You can do either way or with a smaller area with cones. And so here again is our, our view. And when we start, you'll have one team who will be, we can call them the, the tugboats. So they're going to be pulling cargo. So they're going to have to pull their cargo carefully from one end to the other and back and forth. They're going to try and go back and forth as many times as possible. You can do this timed, or you can do it points. Every time somebody gets to the one wall, puts their hand on the wall, it's a point, and, and so on and so forth. Um, and then you'll have the other team who will be the throwers or the rollers or the kickers or whatever skill you're working on. You could even have hockey sticks and, and try and they could try and hit or, or shoot the ball into the pins to knock them over. So they're of course going to try and uh, hit those pins down. So on the go sing signal, the players start going and, uh, and they've made it a certain way here. And then the ball start getting thrown. One pin was knocked over. Now when a pin gets knocked over, the player is not out. That player just has to drop their tugboat or whatever, or sorry, their, their, their cargo. They have to leave everything alone and they can go and help guard or block one of their teammates or one of their friends. So that player had their thing knocked over, they go and help there. So also another player's pin got knocked over. So that player has to leave their stuff and go, and they've chosen to help guard one there as well. They could go guard anything. Now the red the red players uh, can leave their zones if they want to go and grab a ball or two or three or whatever, collect them. But they have to, of course, bring them back into that area before they could throw it or roll it again. So they're at any time in the game allowed. And they also can't, obviously, interfere with the, the blue players there going back and forth. And also, meanwhile, so the goalie, yeah, I tried to get uh, to the side to get a point from that and uh, or see which group can last the longest before the pins go down. Now players have to be careful because if they accelerate too fast, of course, their pin will easily fall over. So it's a, a matter of figuring out that right balance between speed and, and control. This is Powerball. It's an action-filled game for grades 4 to 8. All you'll need are some exercise balls and a set of dodgeballs. For Powerball, we're going to have to look at some of the lines on the gym um, that go lengthwise. So usually there's a center line and then uh, the edge lines of a volleyball court or a basketball court. All gyms have those lines, so it's perfect. You'll have one team within that zone there and one team within this zone there. Uh, and those are the exercise balls. If you don't have exercise balls, you can use some big playground balls or, or any kind of things that are going to that roll nicely on the floor. These green balls coming in, those are the dodge balls. Okay, so the, the goal of the game is it, throw the dodge balls not at the people. So red is not against yellow thrown at the, the teammates or their opponents. Um, they're actually throwing the balls at the big dodgeball, or sorry, at the big exercise balls in the middle. Okay, so instructor yells go, and everyone will start chucking the, the dodgeballs. Yeah, just going to put some visuals here. Of course, if you hit the ball, it's going to start rolling, uh, and teams are going to have to watch and make sure that if it's getting close to their goal line, their goal lines are, are what they're kind of standing beside. If, if the big pink balls go across the lines, then that team loses a point, or the other team gains a point. So right here, we see that pink ball has crossed the goal line, so the red team has scored a point. You can, you can go to 5 or 10 or whatever you want. This game's called Castle Pool for grades 4 to 8. You'll need foam balls, hula hoops, and plastic bowling pins, and thanks to Aaron Parsons for this game idea. It's actually a variation of the Castle Ball game. So to start, you'll have 
the gym split into two halves, two teams, one on each side, and you'll place down seven pins for each team somewhere within the volleyball court. And then each team will also build a castle using hula hoops, so one at the bottom for the base, four sides, and then one to cap it off on the top. And the pins will represent the pool ball, say one to seven, and then the, the castles are pool ball, the eight ball. Um, and then uh, you'll have the players in there. You can have one player max guarding a pin, so you can't have more than one player per pin guarding. Um, and then you'll put the foam balls in and, and they'll start playing. The goal is to knock over the other team's pins before their eight ball, so before the castle. So as they're throwing the balls around, they're trying to knock over the pins. They could also roll, or you can have kicking if you'd like, depending on what skill you're working on. So they need to knock down all the pins first, and then they can go and try and attack that castle and knock that castle down and uh, win the round. Now if a team, just like in a round of pool, if you knock over the castle or the eight ball before the pins, then you would automatically lose the round. Right. This game's called Pin Down, and thanks to Lauren for submitting this idea, you'll need hula hoops, pins, and dodgeballs. So what you'll start with is the hula hoops around the playing area and put a plastic pin in each, and those are the home bases for the players. So one player at each base, they're going to protect their pin. And the remaining players can be along the edge and waiting for their turn to get in. And don't worry, they're not going to be there for too long. If you are so worried about them being inactive there for a period of time, you can have them jog on the spot or something. So, and then you're going to throw in the dodgeballs. Now, basically, the players are going to try and knock over each other's pins, and they can leave their area if they'd like, so they don't have to stay around their pin or in their hula hoop. So, if they leave, they're just more vulnerable. But if a player is left and has thrown and successfully knocks over someone's pin, then the group on the side will yell out pin down. And then what happens is the player whose pin got knocked down has to leave, and then the new player gets to come on, come on in that spot and pick up the pin, and then that player takes that spot. So that's basically the way the game works, so it keeps on rotating like that as pins get knocked down. You can also throw in rules, like if everyone's holding on to a dodgeball at the same time uh, for five seconds, then you can uh, tell them they all need to switch and then, then get the new players in there because they've been waiting around.